colleague, Dr. Ayala, go. Oh, share screen. Hello? Yeah. Yes. You, Am I allowed to share a screen? Oh. You are, and as soon as I stop sharing, okay. now, now you may share the screen. Okay. Even Thank though you didn't you. say please. I didn't say please. I was too demanding, I know. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Sorry about the, the delay. And um, well, I'm not going to share like really new stuff, just more like conversation and updates on where we're at with things. Um, and so I'm looking forward to hearing what you all are doing. So we're going to start with, um, assuming everything will work out okay, uh, mentee. So I'm going to share my screen, which I feel I need to announce. I don't know why each time I do it instead of just doing it. Um, so what you need to do, let me put that, okay. All right. So if you've used Mentee, and many of you probably have used Mentee before. So what you'd need to do is to go on to um, the Mentee site. So www.mentee.com. Uh, and using this code, and you can do this from a phone or from your laptop, um, you can type in. So just list two successful ways you've engaged. And that's a, you know, it, it gets up to three responses. Uh, so however many you want to, if up to three, just the one. Um, and after this, we'll ask you things that didn't work out well, right? So um, I, as you're, come, go ahead. You could put that code in the chat. So people would, could just cut and paste it, right? Can I do that? Yes. Um, I'm going to do that right now. And in the and while you're uh, coming up with responses, uh, Suri is going to play some music for you. Yeah, so this was from, uh, let me just get that screen up. Yeah, so you got to turn off your music which is crap. Am I, oh, I have music on, that's right. You have crap music on. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. uh, hold on, what is it? Every day I put something new in my class. So today it's uh, it's binaural beats, morning meditation music, that's what it is. I've put my glasses on to see from far away. Um, there you go, okay. Can you hear my music? Yes, it's so yeah. loud. This is oh, there right. I think you're gonna have to put whatever questions in chat because I can't hear it over the phone. You asked for music. Should I turn it off? I did. No, no. But uh, but maybe not so loud though. Okay. So we'll just give it like another minute for was there a poll set out there? I don't see anything in chat. I see the answers on your screen. Oh, yeah. I see, okay. The chat, yeah. So to do the, this poll, it's not through, um, not through this is through Menti. Right. It's not through Google. It's not through uh, Zoom. So you go to this website, menti.com um, and you type it, you know, you kind of like send this message either through the phone or through the computer and kind of respond and what this, I'll, I'll show you a couple of the things with Menti. Brittany, that means you're such a snob from Ohio or from California. I, I like the classical covers because it's more relaxing as they're jumping from Zoom call to Zoom call. Like it's like, you know, I, having a little bit of downtime with classical, but they're all like classical covers of like, pop songs so they think it's funny I was playing when they can guess the pop Mirror, song. Um, Cajun music the other day. It's a group in New Orleans that's all Jewish and plays Klezmer music. Yeah I just put it on and, and, and I'm not sure how other folks do it from their computer without sharing their screens and videos but I just whatever on, on the TV I put on uh, YouTube and whatever so any, anything that's instrumental, R&B instrumental, salsa instrumental, um, all sorts of stuff. Anyway. Okay. I think uh, 
we can start talking about these now and feel free to continue sharing them here for some reason uh you can't access this i i think i saw something in the chat oh no you're, you're talking about the what, you, what music you do well maybe that's going to be our next question what music do you play in the background for your students and while they're doing group work um okay so let's see some ways that you've engaged students in the class. So breakout rooms, we see Zoom polls. Um, and so let's see, answering polls in the Zoom, starting with this challenge question, face-to-face, -face, minute quizzes, um, chapter assignments, spreadsheet together. Okay, so I'm seeing Jamboard and Google Forms, Zoom polls. So I see Zoom polls, that's, I'm gonna just stop the, the share now. Uh, this is one um, kind of thing, another kind of uh, polling type of um, program that many of you, how many of you have heard of Menti or have used Menti? You could do like a thumbs up or yeah. Okay. Uh, I meant like if people weren't on. Okay. Yeah. And that could also be like a poll, right? You use the, the Zoom polls for that. Um, so if you're familiar with uh, Menti, I've used it in, in a couple of different ways, but I want to hear from how are people using like the polls, because I see that as a, a number of you have written polls. How do you use polls in the class? Let as me give example, them a quick one. It? Go ahead, give them a quick one. Go for it. Go ahead. Remote learning? Okay. Everybody sees the poll? Yes, I see it. Okay, that's plenty. So I'm going to share the responses. Yeah, um, on question two, the answer is yes, duh. But yeah. where's the question? Where's the response that says, Who's Tom Brady? <laughs> Only you would know. Not know. <laughs> so I find that like a really quick way to get them moving in class, and I have them set up in advance. And you could do those either anonymously, which we just did, or you could do them so that the student, you know, who's answering them. But go ahead, Jen. Now, is that a different piece of technology or is that in Zoom? That is totally in Zoom. Yeah. Uh, okay. What Surrey I, just did was, yeah. You can do that through the- through I have the a book. first name. Hennifer. I know, but I like calling you, but you call me Ayala. So I you can call, call you. You call me mommy. I like that. She I call you mommy. mommy. Can yeah. I call you mommy now? Yeah, Mommy, sure. show her how to do polling. Okay, Hannifer. <laughs> okay, so um, what I would have to do is, do you see, none of you see polling at the bottom of your screens, right? I do. We see it. You, who, who sees it? I see it. Uh, I see it. Okay, good. So I you, see it. you click on polling mm -hmm. and I'm gonna stop sharing this one. And then I'm going to just simply make a new poll. We see the we see a different version, though. We see the version. If we click polls, we just see whatever poll was the most recent one. Yeah, you I would did. have to we make you all host, right? Right. Yeah. So, or co host. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll send everybody a quick PowerPoint on that. But <clears throat> you click it, and it actually takes you back to your Zoom calendar for a second. And then you just write the polls for the class. You can also write them ahead of time. Oh yeah, that like I did just now. Which I, but I, I do them on through settings on Zoom. Yeah, Nicole, do you remember where we did when we did that and who did it? Did somebody in here do polling? Me. Uh, yeah. So we have a recording from when Brittany did it. Or do you want to walk people through it now? Um, well, I mean, there's the recording that you posted uh, of yeah, the workshop that. we did on it um, yeah. that walks through it. Yeah, and. Between semesters, I always forget how to do it. So I go watch um, Brittany's greatest non-classical hits. 
I use both the polling and the mentee, the polling for like quick polls, like the yes, no thing, depending on how many people in the class. Um, and that, but I use mentee for some of the open-ended things like the word clouds. Um, and there's, I mean, I could show real quick, like some examples, but I'd love to hear how other people use, use polling and, and some of the things that we mentioned. And then we'll talk about the things that didn't work. So, um, so I, I've used them to do check-ins uh, in the semester. So how you're feeling right now. So this is a word cloud. The one that we opened with, I did something like that too. And there's like this four corners activity um, that people have done. And this is like, I've seen a translation of this and so I'm gonna, but like with that or the value line. Um, so like you can take, let's say four positions. And whereas in person, they would like stand by like the position. Um, and it could be like, you know, quotes from the readings they had to do, and then they have to stand by which one that they agree with or whatever. Uh, so I guess it could be done in, a, in this way too, agree, disagree, and then have that be um, like, you know, the four statements uh, or four quotes from the readings and then have to discuss why they, you know, why they um, responded as they did and, and so forth. So that's, that's another, those are like ways that I've used the, the polls to, to really gen a lot of these things are just like kind of like to gen prompts to generate more discussion. How do other folks use polls? I, I can share a little bit. So because I'm teaching chemistry, you really like uh, for my slides, there will be some multiple choice questions. I find that I only put the poll very simple. The title is what's your answer? Then I have A, B, C, D which the choices is on my slide. And I find it's very, um, it saved me a lot of time because I can always relaunch them by changing different questions. Who else uses polling? Thank you. Um, I use them quite a bit in my intro classes uh, as like you would clicker questions to check that they're understanding what we just covered. Um, and it helps me go back and review things that they're not getting. And then they also get points for participating in class through the polls. So it's just sort of like a comprehension type check question. So you actually use where they, you, you know who does it rather than anonymous. Yeah, I, I know who does it. And then after class I go and check and you know that they actually completed them and then they get points for it. They don't have to get them right to get the points. Like it's just like, just because engage. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so that's how you it's like it. taking their pulse. It's been helpful because when they're not getting something, it, most of the class gets the poll question wrong. Then I know to like back up and go over something again. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, for the mentee, do you have how do you sign up to use that? Do you have to pay for it? I mean, I'm just looking at mentee.com and there's no indication of how you make a poll or anything like that. You have to go, no, you don't have, you need, I think an account, but you don't need to um, pay for, there's like free, th just like with all, there's like a free version and a, and a premium version, right? But you, to, to get onto that, you go on to Mentimeter. To go onto menti.com, that's for people to respond to your polls. Okay. For you to create it, it's, I'll give you the other, um, the other link to that. It's mentimeter.com. Uh, uh, not sure what, but here, this is how you create it. But to respond to it, it's menti.com. Got it, thank you. Hello, all. Mm -hmm. Hello. Can I, I'm sorry, I, I'm, can I add something, David? Depends what you're gonna ask. Yeah, go Jennifer, ahead. Can I add something? Yes. yes. You asked the right person. Please, no, can again. Of course. Uh, I've, I was just talking about polls. I've used polls a lot, but uh, like in the ways you've suggested, like with um, temperature taking of the class, kind of seeing what people should know, but maybe don't know, but also then like improvisationally where we'll be having a class and then some, something will happen in the class and I'll realize that, that I, I have to check something. So I put them in a breakout room for a minute or, or a few minutes. Um, in there and then I'll go back to zoom and I'll, I'll make a poll right there. Yeah. And it'll be kind of based on what we've been talking about even a few minutes before. Mm -hmm. and, 
I'll flash the poll on the screen a few minutes after that. So that can be done. I mean, usually I do them beforehand because I kind of know what I want them to be on. But sometimes it happens where you can, you can arrange things and you can you can something will happen. You'll, you'll kind of think of something and then you can you can do it really right quick um, on Zoom. And that's been pretty effective also. And do you um, use anonymous or non anonymous? Uh, I use anonymous usually. Uh, I guess I could use a, you know, with their names, but I just think kind of things, I think it's better. And you get some really interesting results also when that happens. Um, so I use anonymous ones. That's good. And congratulations on being chair. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much, David. That's more condolences. Yeah, you see yeah. everybody like Jill's beginning to smile because she's almost done. Susan, not so much. Pat and I are really happy we're out of that business. Right. Well, um, thank you anyway. Pat, is your hand up? No, it was uh, for the question I asked before. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Um, so polling and, you know, I just, I, I love making sure that the students are there and it's a good way to find out if they're paying attention or not. Um, what are, I, go ahead, somebody's gonna say something. No, no that, I was just gonna say that I saw in the, in the chat that Ginger was saying, talking about Kahoot, and if you wanted to talk a little bit oh, more I was about that, do, but you I could was, do Kahoot, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, actually give me a couple minutes on that because I got to reload something that I wiped out by mistake of 10 minutes ago. So Nicole was gonna say something. Yeah, I saw the thing about Kahoot too, Ginger, absolutely. Um, I find that that keeps coming up a lot in my classes. My students, because a lot of them are going to be teachers or they're, they are K-12 teachers, they're using Kahoot a lot in K-12 right now. So, you know, they really love it. And a twist on all of this is that what I found even interesting is because a lot of my is teaching them how to use the technology is that they're creating their own. So I don't know if that could work for all of you. I mean, how great would it be that they create, you know, one of their assignments is to create a poll question or a full poll for your next class, because then they have to really go through your materials. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, again, it's just a whole, for me, it's like teaching them how to use the technology, but also trying to get them in a sneaky way to learn what I'm teaching them. So I don't know if that could work, but I love, they love Kahoot. Yeah, I'm pulling one up in a couple of minutes. It's gonna take, I had a demo for this group and then I accidentally deleted it this morning. So I'm just reloading it now. Um, I was just gonna say that to Nicole, I actually, that I did that, I assigned that last week to my, uh, to my, but it's also educational. So students that are going into this. So at the, like after having a class discussion on material that we're reading and, and you know, debating whatever, uh, they then got into groups and had to develop their own polls using Kahoot or, or you know, like questions and responses. Uh, some people use Quizlet as another, like they're like kind of like flashcard, digital flashcards. Um, but that's, that's a way of using. Go ahead, Ginger, how have you? Yeah, no, it's great for review, exam review kind of stuff, you know, creating the Quizlets. Yeah, so um, what I'm doing now is loading up a big file. So it's gonna take a minute, but then I'll walk people through it. But I'll show you in the meantime, let me just do this. Somebody do a commercial for one second while I load this up. I was the gonna latest. say, right. thanks, Dan. Um, how are you going to, how do you use Kahoot in your class then? Or, or yeah, in your, in your teach, because you, you mentioned it, Ginger, so you didn't get a chance. Yeah, to um, I, I used it a lot with, uh, I used it with, with political science. We were going to create a game show to get to know the professors in the department. Um, I have used it just as a way of reviewing material. I plan to use, I didn't use it this trimester actually, but I plan to use it next trimester when I'm doing intro to public administration. This year we, I was doing, this trimester I was doing budgeting and I could have, I just didn't, I didn't think of my old tricks and tools, but it's a good one. My daughter is an eighth grader and they use it all the time and they love it and they do it for academic stuff and they do it for fun stuff. And I've had just had great experiences with the college students doing it. I like your twist on it by having them create the Kahoot because they all know how, right? And it's all menu yeah, driven. They, they know so much more. Um, while we're waiting for my new Kahoots to load, I'm going to give you another example. Let's play Jeopardy. Does anybody use Jeopardy in their classrooms? 
You see my Jeopardy score board there? Do people see it? Yeah. Yes, I see it. I see and, it. Yes, I, and yes, I used it to you. I okay, actually, actually, Jen turned me on to this. So this was for a final review. And I put the students into groups. You could also buy a version, version where they have to pay for it and you could keep track. But I, the, the students get extremely competitive on this, um, which I really like. So somebody do you find the program, David? Where do you find that the uh, app? I'll send it to you. There's so many as Jeopardy.com or download Jeopardy. Um, pick a category, anybody. Do the math. Okay, for how much, Pat? Oh, go for broke, five dollars. Okay, I keep looking to my right because I have two screens. Okay, so for Pat Redden, and oh, you can set the Jeopardy, it's anybody answers. And you can set the timer with the music. I don't have this one set up, I don't think, with the music, but 66% represents what? Boop, 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 boop. What is two thirds? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. But in reality, it, what was the percentage of Jeopardy? <laughs> it makes sense in the context of my class. So, that's just another way, you know, another way to do it. And it is so competitive when they do that. I, I use the Jeopardy board as one of the projects that the students have to do in my methods of teaching science class. They have mm. to work in pairs to develop the Jeopardy board for a particular grade level. But the problem there is they keep wanting to use the what they tell me are the school Jeopardy yep. rules, where you take turns in answering the question. So Trish might answer the first question, Jennifer gets the second question and so on, regardless of position on board. Half of them don't even know how to play Jeopardy the real way. They have no concept that the answer is what they see on the board and the question is what they ask. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. Is one loose smiling now? This might get the smile off. Only two people in my class yesterday knew who Frank Sinatra was. Not that many? Yeah, no, so we're getting old. Okay, um, somebody mentioned cahoots and you get a... You could get a, let me do the screen, whoops, stop. Do you see that on your screen now, Eating Christmas? Yeah. Okay, so what I did was I imported slides, everybody sees that, and I imported a PowerPoint that I have. And this is about the Kalahari Desert. Now I wanna ask some questions to see if they're alive or not. So here we go. So I'm gonna add a question here, and it's gonna be, well, let's try this type of an answer. And I'm going to ask them how long. Oh, I don't want to do that one. I'm going to ask this question. Um, which is not a clue of how long they live there. So I'll put DNA, oldest DNA in the world, the Kung daily, weekly, they're all times. That's a newspaper language or cave art. And the correct answer is there was no Kung Daily Times 40,000 years ago. So that question has been added. So then now when they're doing this and when they're taking it as a class, that's the one I didn't use. So they'll see the PowerPoint, then they'll get the question and then they have to answer it. And they can answer it in class and you find out how they do it. And you can add any type of questions you want, true, false, um, whatever you want. And you can send it out to them and give them a pin number. And it's really fun. Actually, um, Mary Lou, have you heard of somebody named Rebecca Marcela Gomez? No clue who she is. 
Okay, she taught me how to do this. Um, I was in a meeting where she was doing this. And again, what I like about these is that the students love it and they get very competitive. So I always do it in groups. And does anybody else use Kahoot? It's free. <clears throat> yeah, I use it for quiz re reviews, for exams. Like Who's speaking? Uh, Jill. Okay, go, go ahead, Jill. Yeah, I, I use Kahoot um, during reviews, like when we're going over material and the students get really competitive with it. Yeah. And, and it shows their scores. Yeah, and that's fun too. I mean, I did this in traditional classes too. Mary Lou, you have to pay attention in class. You can't talk to people. No, no, no. <laughs> I love catching my students when they're doing that or eating. <laughs> Paul, what are you doing? Eyes on the camera. Okay. Uh, we have a question, David. Does St. Peter's have premium access? Oh. Brittany, I don't think so, right? We don't, do we? No. Um, I, we did for the pandemic, and then I went back to the other one. Yeah, but let's put, Nicole and I have a meeting with Fred today at four, and let's push him on that. I was actually thinking that today, because I'm, I'm a little baby, so I bought it for myself today. And then I did a beautiful demo for you all and wiped it out, which is kind of my thing. <laughs> I bet, David, I bet it's there somewhere. I bet you can find it. Sometimes I lose things in Kahoot too, and then I find them. So it can be tricky. So what other ways do you engage? One of the things, you, you, most of you saw the report I did on the student survey. Um, they love merit, things of engagement. And faculty do too. Students think we can do better than we think we're doing. But they like things such as in the comments, cahoots, um, just simple things. How many are you? Just use the hand raising fu function. Who shoveled snow today? Do a reaction. Everybody see reactions at the bottom of your screen? Nobody else? Thumbs up if you shoveled today. We had no snow in Jersey City. Who shoveled over the weekend? OK. So that's just a simple way to engage them. Also, Jay, when my students have their cameras off, I call on them. Jay? I know, I was ready, I was ready, I was ready for that. <laughs> that's actually something that I find very effective. I, I find that 95% of my students have their cameras on now. And I know we go back and forth on that. And I don't make it mandatory, but they don't like to be called on all the time either. So. And to me, it creates a better sense of community if their cameras are on. So just ask them to do that. We're gonna have a workshop next week where group learning is gonna, Mary Lou's gonna do that. And that's just so important in engaging them. But what other techniques do you all use? People on the, I'm just looking back at the mentee and there's people and someone wrote Jamboard and Google Forms. Um, so we can maybe talk about, and then working on a spreadsheet together and like the group work, but I know the group work will uh, talk about uh, some more next week, but how do you use, uh, what was it, Jamboard and Google Forms? And you're like, who uses, Jam I, I use Jamboard, G Drive, okay. I, I, I can show, go ahead. Okay. Jen, you got me again. <laughs> that was oh, okay, is that what it was, okay. <laughs> I was, okay. um, yeah, so like you've sh actually, I really started using it after you shared it. I mean, even today, I thought when you weren't getting in, I made one about the, remember you asked, like, what did you have for lunch? Or what are you going to have for breakfast? Even if like, it's like a do now come in Jamboard, um, you know, that sort, you know, of course, that is same with Google Forms. I mean, Google Forms, you could really use for anything for an exit ticket. Um, and again, maybe we'll do another workshop on that, like specifically, because Google Forms has really upped, like if any of you go into Google Forms, I'll find the link. There are pre-made forms out there now that they have exit ticket. They have um, just a lot of really updated, easy ways to make forms. So that's, 
Jamboard right now in one of my classes I'm doing like it's posted and it's winter vacation like what did you do over your winter vacation and they share a picture of themselves and they have to write their name so that's what I'm doing right now in one of my classes. I I, I use it I well I, as you know I use I use Jamboard a lot. Um, I'll, I'll share my screen real quick just to show you some things that that I've done recently and and or from last semester. I could find that. Okay. So I can use it at like what yours, like at first I would just use it to introduce things. So um, like to introduce a particular topic. So like, you know, what, what, what is early childhood? And then people put up their images and descriptions. And then from there we discuss it and connect it to the concepts, but it, it so it's to introduce a topic, but also maybe like for some, like, you know, what does a, you know, a, a application of what they read uh, afterwards and so then creating this kind of like concept map of front from better ecological perspective and I think I mentioned this uh, maybe I mentioned this last time too um, uh, data portraits and that that was something by Du Bois that that I that I'm starting to use more it's like okay what are some statistics that you're collecting from these different places and quotes and then create these like posters and I think you could do that with like different um, types of activities as like the group um, as kind of like group work, because um, I find like in in the in the group, oh, this is like learning stations. Um, I, I do also a lot of uh, breakout rooms. I saw that that's something that that folks were were talking about, um, but like try to have something structured within the the groups that the, you know to report on and to use, whether it's like a Google form that they fill out or like a Jamboard thing. Or um, there's a lot of great. Uh, templates on um, that like that teachers are, are posting where you use Google Slides for like learning stations and, and things like that, um, that that people can just use and adapt so that while they're in groups they can kind of like do this uh, jigsaw puzzle thing and each group is working on a task and then comes together and then you have this you create this PowerPoint slide together uh, Google, Google Slides. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> One other thing with Jam, does anybody else want to say anything about that area? I'm going to share my screen again for something um, else, something that you people stole from my people. Passover became the Last Supper. But so in this course, I'm teaching with Dr. Seora Lenny on different toolkits on diffusion. You see, you know, I Bob the Builder. I'm just going to adaptations, blah, blah, blah. I told them it's not one direction, get it, one direction, people understand. <laughs> and then I go through a lot of stuff, um, but then what I wanna, oh, here we go. So this thing you all stole from my people was Passover. And there's a nice little annotation. Has anybody used the annotation thing where you could actually draw? What are they eating for dinner in the traditional, oh, where'd it go? Text, draw, boom. Oh, I see what I did wrong, okay. See what they're eating for dinner there? Yeah, Probably lot, lot cuts. Could you see the little arrow? I can make it a different color. But in Peru, What are they eating? Does anybody know what that is? Guinea pig. Yeah. So just using that little, I chose the wrong color for the arrow, but here, let's, I was actually at a party for a student last year and she's, and it was Ecuadorian and they were eating Kui guinea pig. And another student who was from Sri Lanka was there and burst into tears. She said, they're eating snowflake because she had a pet. When she was and that's not all of Ecuador, by the way. That's I know. Oh, listen to the defensive person. I know. And my Peruvian and Ecuadorian students always say, it's not my family. It's in mine. I admit it. I, in my family, they eat squee. Yeah, yeah. That's the northern regions of Ecuador, the, the lowlands and the uh, coastal regions, and we don't eat it. So. Yeah. And yeah, and we don't all eat rattlesnake in Missouri, except when it's in front of us. <laughs> um, Actually, speaking of Ecuador, um, Vic, is Victoria here? She's not. Is going to start cl um, classes in Quechua next month. 
which I think is very cool. So, I mean, just that little aspect again, and then they could draw things too. People that are better talented than I am, you could actually write this way too, just like you are on a jam board. I haven't gotten that down, but I can't write, you know, using pen and pencil either. Using that annotate function, like I've been trying to do like little pre-class activities for students who get there early because it sort of gets them interacting. So I was using the annotate tool to let them color in a brain before class started, like because we were going over parts of the brain that class. So oh, that's great. it just it just gets them sort of doing something. So then when class actually starts, they actually keep doing things. Um, so that's one way I use the annotate feature. Terry wants mm -hmm. to know if they do the right side of the brain or the left side of the brain first. <laughs> well, we do go over the myth that some people are left-brained and some people are right-brained during that class. So oh, good. So you finally caught up to us in psychology. We know it's a myth now. Good. I do a whole thing about left-handed things too. Um, yeah, no, I, I think what Brittany's talking about is so important in this remote world is that get engaged, it's fun, and they're doing it as a group, right, Brittany? Yeah. yeah, they're doing it all together. Another thing I've done is pre-class chat questions. So I'll say, put in the chat, what TV show you've been watching or uh, things like that. And, it, and they get excited because they like to talk about TV. And then once class starts and I ask them to answer a question in the chat, like, what is this experiment missing? They're more likely to actually do it because they've already sort of gotten warmed up to use the yeah. chat and stuff. They're, they're already there. And that was the other thing. The chat is just a wonderful tool and always assigning somebody other than yourself to monitor it because you're supposed to be doing other things. Um, like Brittany's lecturing about the brain, I'm acting immature, but we all have our things that we have to concentrate on in class. And that really does make a big difference. What are their TV shows that they like? Oh, they uh, old shows. Like it was surprising. They were talking about like the Golden Girls. So one student said, which I thought was funny. Um, a lot of people were talking about Bridgerton. So then the next class, I played the classical music from Bridgerton, and they got excited. Um, so that kind of stuff. Yeah, and those could actually be worked into in for a lot of us into the lectures too. Um, I know we have only five five minutes because I have class. Yes. Yeah, so. um, but and I, you know, I want to hear more like what, from what you know what people are. But I wanted to introduce this one thing and just see what I, I want to see what the students think of it. I'm I'm bivl I'm not sure how to feel about it. I'm going to put it in the chat. But there's um, these simulation games that I think they we have that in the sci in the in the natural sciences, but they're trying this in the social sciences. So the the Harvard um, Center for Developing Child or something like that has created this like simulation game building up resilience, which, um, you know, that the whole thing just like, I don't know how to feel about it. I want, but I want to, I realize I don't have to decide that. I think I'm going to bring it to the students and we can evaluate it together, but it is, it's kind of like this sim game. I don't know. There's, I know other people probably know the, the actual uh, terminology for this but like you it's like a, a video game but then it's like it has like a with the social environment and looking at economic factors and looking at individual factors and all this kind of stuff to create a community um, anyway but I wanted to introduce that and wondering what folks thought about these types of like this kind of newer area of online stuff on, in terms of like gamifying things I, I think Victoria isn't here I wanted to know because I know she did some workshops on this. I wanted to know what, uh, how it could be used, what people think of that. Any thoughts? Okay, Nicole, do you have it in front of you or should I pull it up, the, just the link to all the workshops with all the tapes? Yeah. I shared it before, but I'll share it again. Okay. Um, Jen, I love this. This is great. I think this is, very useful. I think it's something that, I mean, I haven't, I just clicked one or two of them. So, but wow, it, I think it really could spark a lot of discussion. One thing that uh, I came across with a Facebook page, a Facebook group I'm on for teaching chemistry was using escape rooms. And somebody Ooh. developed a, an escape room that's wonderful to get out to to do the various things you have to answer content questions 
and it looked like it's going to take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. but it was really good. I'm trying to find the link to post and I can't get it right now. Yeah, Pat, escape rooms are big going back into that gamification and the game-based learning, um, but they do take a lot of time to develop. But there's, like Jen was saying, there's so many resources out there right now of these teachers creating these materials. And um, a lot of times now what I do is I just Google what I'm looking for and usually can find something or at least something that is able to be modified for what you need. Yeah, Trish had her hand up. I'm sorry. Yeah, Trish, go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm actually working in virtual reality for um, some projects for um, a company that I consult at, and we actually have two universities that we're doing work with, that where we're creating virtual experiences. One class uh, that we're working on is finance, and we actually created a virtual space that looks like a space they would have to go into and do inventory, you know, like, so we're actually take putting with the headsets, we're able to put the kids into the places that they might possibly be doing uh, business at and changing that, you know, like an accounting person who's just looking at numbers, giving them an actual physical realm to go into and interact with is it's pretty exciting. Uh, but one of the reactions that we had from the university is they they didn't want it too gamified. <laughs> like, I was like, don't we need some ambient sounds and background noises? And they're like, well, we have to be really careful with that. So there is that fine line with what um, the research that we're, you know, the, the things that we're creating on the level of gamifying too much or, or not. But um, I'm actually, you know, in the, the, the augmented VR space right now and, and doing a lot of cool, exciting things. Um, and I, I think it's something that uh, I, I told David I would give a lecture to as soon as I get time to pull something together because <laughs> I am so busy and as you, you all are too. And you said those sets cost what, $40 each or something? No, that was a cheaper set. And, and if you're gonna go in, it's better to go in big. Uh, right now, Oculus Quest 2 is the, the set of, um, it's setting the new standard. So when a device of some kind hits uh, 10 million penetration for people making purchasing of the device, uh, it's Main Street. We're at 5 million people now. 5 million people have just bought this uh, Quest 2. And it's been out since um, end of November. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very affordable now. It's all Bluetooth. It's self-contained applications. You don't have to be hooked up to a computer. Whereas, you know, back in 2016, you had to be tethered to a computer to get the virtual experience. But now it's fully contained in the headset. I have a question. Yeah. Do we know if um, there's an impact to users who have autism or epilepsy when it comes to those types of VR? tools? Yeah, so definitely epilepsy is an issue of uh, the, the uh, president of the company I'm consulting at, he gets uh, motion sickness. So we have him test everything because if he gets sick, we know we got to fix it. And he just has it slightly. Uh, I was just queuing something yesterday and I thought I was going to have a seizure <laughs> because everything was blinking and moving. You know, it's, it's a really long process to create this stuff. But um, talk to Fred and Andrea about that yeah. and their research on motion sickness. I was saying, yeah, I was going to say, since Fred has nothing to do, we should let him test out stuff because that's. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm actually working on a, a virtual gallery. Um, that I'm building myself and I'm going to have the students put their work in once I hopefully <laughs> with all the other stuff I'm doing but um, and I'm working with a lot of uh, hospitals as well queuing uh, different um, creating um, so it there's so much reach with VR and AR and and building apps it, it's just it's incredible I, I can't wait to present everything to you guys. <laughs> yeah, let us know when you're ready. Um, we're about to end. Um, just one other source that I find extremely useful and the best source is the students. Ask them what they are doing in other classes that works and their ideas. Because, And they won't do it as a way to avoid dealing with the subject matter. They're saying, hey, this is really hard for us too. This is what we like to do. Um, and if you don't know how to do something, if you stumble, they'll also know how to do it as well. 
Mary Kate, pay attention. Did you see that? She she used to be of us. Now she's an. I, I, ha I have this phone charger that I took from the cafeteria, so I had to charge my phone. So Jen or Nicole, do you have any last words? I just want to thank both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, everybody. That's thank it. you yep, for time coming. to go. <laughs> okay, peace thank out. You. Ciao. Oh, our next one is the 18th at noon with Mary Lou. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank Hola. you.